time for FOMO. Ultimately, we're gonna be looking at Marathon Digital, but this is part of a broader digital assets conversation, a Bitcoin conversation. Bitcoin at the moment is lower by about $2,500 on the futures contracts. Uh, I do wanna do a quick market check because as promised uh, with the market moving, we're gonna have at least one eye on it throughout the session. Ben talked about during the last segment touching seg uh, session lows. We're essentially there right now. You have uh, E-mini S&Ps down 85, uh, essentially the same for the SPX, which is trading down uh, 83, uh, just uh, under, or just over rather, one and a half percent. Uh, NDX is leading the charge to the downside, uh, Ben, 340 points, 17,965. So cutting right through 18,000, like a hot knife through butter. Similar uh, in the case of the Dow as it breaks below 38,000. The Russell and the S&P is testing some of those round numbers as we speak. The Russell right at 2,000. And uh, S&P is uh, just uh, a stone's throw from that 5,100 level. You mentioned 50-50 earlier as a line in the sand. Uh, that could uh, be very, very important. I mean, we could be there later on this afternoon. Yeah, I'm noticing the Russell here really accelerating to the downside, down 1.78% uh, and back to this 2,000 level, basically back to the middle of the range that we've been in. Uh, throughout the year, right? We traded up to 2100 recently. Talk about a uh, hot knife through butter. I mean, that 2050 level did not really provide much support at all. And you can see here recently taking out the uh, uh, March lows. So again, basically back to levels that we haven't seen uh, since the middle to end of February. So uh, small caps coming under pressure. Not surprised to see this with the move up that we're seeing in the U.S. dollar. You've got crude oil prices on the rise higher, geopolitical tensions, which are raising some concerns into this weekend. And I think this this is also just a reflection of, uh, you know, investors' jitters, the uh, uncertainty that you feel uh, when the market's at these all-time highs, right? We've seen a very uh, significant move to the upside in the end of last year, beginning of this year. And so I'm not surprised to see a little bit of a pullback. A lot of people thought this was going to happen. We didn't know necessarily when, uh, but we knew it was going to. And um, uh, again, I think the real uh, key right now is how big, how much price decay do we see? Keep an eye on those March lows, as Alex mentioned, again, around that 2050 level. But, yeah, this is going to attract some attention, especially as we head into a Friday afternoon session like this. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Hey, Ben, as promised, let's talk some digital assets. Bitcoin, I, look, it's down 4%. Mm -hmm. No surprise. I mean, it's uh, down alongside uh, some risk assets here. Uh, you know, that's a pretty big move. But all things considered, this has been a very, very resilient marketplace. Absolutely. Uh, you can chalk it up to some of the fundamentals, right? While um, what's been fueling stocks has been expectations for rate cuts to come and improving inflation data, we saw quite the reversal of that this week in terms of rates to the upside and some of the numbers we saw earlier in the week, CPI. But the fundamentals that have been providing the lift and the uh, trend to the upside that we've seen in Bitcoin, futures to recently above 70,000 and near a test of that all-time high up around 74,000. There you can see, uh, again, the run-up that we've seen uh, recently. Well, ultimately, um, uh, there's Mara actually, but uh, Bitcoin recently double-topped up around that 74,000 level as well. But um, uh, Alex, Bitcoin has had the uh, expectations for Ether ETF. We had the uh, momentum from the uh, Bitcoin ETF approval. You've got the halving event. There's multiple stories that are playing out that aren't necessarily there. You can see a couple tops up in the uh, Bitcoin futures contract, but a couple stories that haven't necessarily played out in terms of the indices. And so, again, a reflection thereof, right? Bitcoin's managed to hold those upper levels while stocks have been coming on a bit succumbing, uh, some succumbing some to to those uh, uh, investors' jitters and concerns. So when you're looking at the overall assets, I think if we're looking at something like Marathon Digital, it's mm -hmm. so tied to the asset. It's somewhat like uh, a gold miner would be to mm -hmm. gold itself. But it's not almost a proxy got, too. It's not a perfect proxy, mm -hmm. but because your business is essentially accumulating the asset, you have a strong correlation. Hey, oil drillers don't trade exactly like crude oil, but no one's going to say that the crude oil price doesn't influence the stock price sure. of, a, of a driller in oil. Now, that being said, when it comes to something like Bitcoin and a Bitcoin miner, we know that there can be tremendous amounts of volatility. And oftentimes, even uh, the miners are trading uh, with greater volatility than crypto itself. Uh, when you're looking at Bitcoin, though, because I think you start there with the conversation on the asset, then you look to uh, maybe the miners and some of the nuances there. How critical has it been that although it hasn't uh, necessarily broke through 74, it's sort of double top to your point, but it's also used the former highs between about 65 and 68,000 as support. 
as support. Is that critical? Absolutely. I mean, when you get a breakout into uncharted territory, mm -hmm. Alex, when you take out old highs, you want to establish that new area of value at, a, at an upper level. And that really comes into play with, well, the extension to the upside and then eventually find that stopping price. But then that pullback comes into play. And how severe is it? Because you either have a V top type pattern play out where you come all the way back through that prior resistance, as Alex mentioned, or that V top kind of bottoms out around that prior area of resistance becomes new support and then you establish a bit of a range at that upper level. So this is key right now again to hold above 68,000 that's going to be important but also to get back up to 74 right and establish a bit of a range above and around this 70,000 level. So I think in many ways this is exactly what the bulls are looking for to be able to hold this upper level relative to and again just to kind of point to Marathon hasn't really done that well right Marathon mm -hmm. Digital MARA uh, ticker symbol uh, that's another stock uh, similar the ones that we had looked at uh, earlier in the show. If you long this one this week, you're not happy headed into the weekend with the broader market weakness we've seen. Rates kind of all taking its toll on shares, topping out around 34 into the end of February this week, back below the 50, back below the 200-day moving average. So uh, back to around 16, right? Back below 20. And again, while shares of Marathon have taken out that March lows, uh, the one thing that I think is key for the bulls is they're still holding above the January lows. So the move lower I saw today still did didn't take out that 1450 level. That was lows for the year uh, that we saw earlier uh, in January. But I do want to point to what's got me a little bit concerned about that, as we were just talking RSI with Rick, the chart master, Alex, is that the relative strength indicator has taken out that January low. So RSI, if it's any indication of what's to come, Ultimately, we could see further divergence here, right, where the stock continues to come off, yet Bitcoin continues to hold these upper levels. And I guess worst case scenario, tying back to what you were just saying, what if Bitcoin starts to give way uh, for the marathon bulls? Uh, that's not necessarily want to see, right, because that could further weigh on prices. So lots to keep an eye on next week, not only the futures, the actual underlying Bitcoin, but also some of these individual names that are associated with it. Yeah, I think the one other interesting piece is that, you know, you look at something like marathon, yeah, it's somewhat underperformed, but it's just more volatile. I mean, it's moving twice as much as Bitcoin's moving. Bitcoin down 4%, uh, Marathon's down 8.3%, uh, but it has like no correlation whatsoever to the market. So mm -hmm. some people like to create portfolios that are uncorrelated or have no correlation just so, you know, if one thing goes wrong, everything mm -hmm. doesn't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there is some, uh, you know, you can make the argument for some exposure to this space for that reason. Clearly, I think the FOMO feeling, Ben, something we always kind of discuss when we're looking at this space is to the upside in crypto. It's not really something you hear about people uh, trying to, you know, be bearish on or, or betting against. If, if you felt that way, you just kind of weren't involved to begin with. So that whole phenomenon of HODL and, and being involved in this space and holding on, I think, leads to this FOMO feeling. Um, we haven't broke through those former uh, highs that have acted as support. So perhaps, uh, you know, some upside in the future if these levels hold again.